Is no pack, is it, Dunker? Is no pack, is it, Dunker? Right up. It's funny because he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkirk, a World War II film out in 2017? In an age where the best films are men running around in tights, superpowers. It's really impressive that the film's done well. I mean, how could it not? It had Christopher Nolan directing it. Eh? What do you mean who? Dark Knight Christopher Nolan, Interstellar Christopher Nolan, Inception Christopher Nolan. Oh, I'm still someone who thinks the actors do everything in the film. Thanks buddy. It's earned over 200 million worldwide. It's praised for its visual realism because it uses real ships, real planes and even real locations. It told the story just the way it was. The music is by the artist of musical scores, Hans Zimmer himself. And in there he deliberately constructed the music to keep you on edge. In fact he used a musical technique called the shepherd tone. Now I wish I could continue praising it but sadly it ends there. When it comes to realism of characters and demographic, the film is a big fat film. Funny cause he's fat. <laughs> some people are calling this film a whitewash. Come to think of it, there are some non-white faces but that's only in one crowd scene. Now I'm not one for pulling out the race card so let's have a look ourselves, yeah? Uh, yeah. I want to say it's not looking so good. Hmm. The Oxford historian Yasmin Khan says in a book The Raj at War, Britain did not fight the Second World War, the British Empire did. If the people watching the film have knowledge regarding history and World War II then this will be apparent to them and obvious to them. Sadly the people that know and the people that are of knowledge are very few. The sad reality is that the film pushes the narrative that the Britain that fought at Dunkirk was the Britain as it exists today. Now it's obvious that that's a load of baloney mate because the Britain in those days was the British <laughs> Empire. Someone who we expect to get the wrong end of the stick is our friend Nige. Well, well, well. There, Nige? Nigel Farage urges youngsters to go and watch it. Youngsters? <laughs> who still uses that term nowadays? First of all mate, you're wearing a suit to the cinema. Who does that? And secondly, why does it look like your dog's just died? And you know what's more interesting is, it's clear that he's not posing for a selfie, yeah? So someone's clearly taken this picture and shown it to him and he's gone, I approve. Nige mate, what on earth were you thinking? A lot of people don't know this but in World War II, India contributed to of, well, over 2 million military personnel, making it the largest volunteer army in history. In Dunkirk, which is what we're talking about, India gave over 1,800 men. Now this is obviously a conservative estimate. Initially the British didn't decide to use animals, yeah? They were like, nah it's long mate, we're just going to use vehicles and stuff. But then when they went to France, they noticed that the terrain's all messed up mate. So they called India and said, you know what? We need you to bring loads of animals. So India had to send over 2,000 horses and mules alongside 1,800 men. These men were majority, well I've seen it from many sources now, they were pretty much all Muslim. Reason being it was easier logistically and in terms of the spiritual needs the Muslims were easier to take. What's also interesting is the sailors, the people who actually had to help cross the people from Dunkirk to the UK. The sailors were mostly South Asian and East African. Yes, they were black people as well because the French cavalry consisted a lot of Algerians and Africans as well. They counted for one in four crewmen on British vessels. The, the Indians when they were sent, they were sent in four companies. 
yeah just just think of it as four groups when the people tried to cross from dunkirk to the uk and you got hitler's army bombarding them or whatever only three companies made it one company got left behind they were you know captured by the germans and then eventually killed if i figured this out in an hour's worth of research don't you think a film with a big budget well researched and big production like dunkirk would also have noticed this as well i mean there's so much emphasis on realism why is it so important for us to remove the colored people from the beaches of dunkirk and from the ships why is it so important that whites are seen only to be saved by other white people? Why can't we see men fighting in turbans rather than helmets? Why can't we see Muslim men praying before going to battle? Calm down, they're just questions, yeah? You're free to formulate your own opinion based upon what I've said. Maybe if we saw how much the non-British sacrificed for our safety and prosperity, and how they fought alongside us till the bitter end that we'd be more inclined to inviting us and allowing them to stay in our country rather than forcing them out and calling them cockroaches while you've got grandsons of the Nazis that are allowed to come in and out of the country whenever they feel like it. It's just a film yeah? Calm down! Well, we do know that stories can dehumanize, demonize and erase as well as create pity, compassion, sympathy and even love for those who are strange and strangers. And that is why Dunkirk and any other story is never just a story. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.